Oh, sorry. Good morning. It is way too early. Sun has yet to come up. Red digital cinema camera versus the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4. I don't even know if I said that right. It's such a long name. So today's a pretty unique day. So I'm actually going to take one of these two cameras out, get some footage with it, and show it to you guys. You guys try to figure out which camera it is. But today is day one of the LAUSD teacher strike. And as some of you may know, my girlfriend Carrie is a teacher here in Los Angeles. And it's a pretty massive deal because there's going to be like 35,000 teachers and educators that aren't going to show up to work today. So, you know, it's a, it's a complicated situation. And unlike Jake Paul, My teachers never told me that I do believe that teachers have a very important role on this planet and our future. But Jake does have a point though. It would be pretty awesome if all teachers taught us how to buy Lambo cash. My teachers never liked me one bit. I don't think we could invest enough in education and just making the general public uh, smarter a little bit. So I'm gonna take one of these mystery cameras with me and uh, let's go. Why don't we just start this off with a quick poll. Tell me which camera you guys think that was. Was it the black magic or was it the red? So I'm gonna set this camera up to record this camera and let's start looking at some side-by-sides. And the first thing I'm noticing is the difference in color tones right off the bat and they are both set to 5600 white balance with zero tint. So with the same exact settings, they're already starting to look a little bit different, but let's get out of this studio and see how they both compare in the real world. Let's go. You had enough fun just playing in the mud? You look filthy, you need a shower. We were trying so hard to keep him away from the mud. The one muddy spot, they just ran straight towards it. Look at that, they're just laying it now. It's not even an appropriate way to lay down for a dog. They're just doing that to just get as muddy as possible. That butt has to come in the car with us. All right, so now that my Jeep is properly drenched in mud, let's take a look at some of these side-by-side -side shots. Now let's state the obvious. The green from the red is super saturated compared to the black magic. The black magic looks a little bit more mellow and a little more to the warmer yellowish side when we're looking at the green but considering all the settings are matched it's crazy how different the grass looks and i would actually say the red looks a little bit more accurate because this is after like six days of non-stop rain and it's the greenest i've ever seen los angeles when we got there i was like holy crap this looks like the windows 97 wallpaper <laughs> here's a shot of carrie getting hit by direct sunlight but this is the default look out of both cameras right now we are going to circle back and try color grading these manually and here's one more shot where i was trying to talk to the camera but i didn't make any sense so i'm just gonna mute the audio and voice over it but you can see the sensor size difference here for sure they're both on the same f-stop but the background's a little bit blurrier on the red but to be honest the difference between the sensor size here super 35 and micro four thirds it's not as drastic as i thought it would be in terms of depth of field and now we got PETA in the studio and that's one of the beauties of studio lighting is that pretty much all cameras look good in the studio but we can kind of pick up some minute differences here the shadows definitely come across a little bit more contrasty on the red which is something that red's been known for it kind of gives it that moody look and yeah there's PETA being a supermodel as usual she's a great model by the way all the other dogs I point a camera at them and they're like get that away from my face but PETA loves that attention so that's why she's the superstar here luckily she's a dog so I don't have to pay her when it comes to super slow-mo the red obviously has a lot more horsepower behind it and the black magic caps out at 120 frames per second in HD and the black magic's crop is is pretty big so it's not perfect but it's nice to have the red can do 120 frames per second pretty easily without much of a crop but once you bump it up to like 240 then you're dealing with a serious crop all right so here's a quick tour of our setup here we got our red mounted on the tripod and then we have the black magic here we got our main mount holding it here and then two other extra arms just to make sure it doesn't just fall off because that would be 
kind of sad, I guess. They're both running on Zine lenses, but since that has a bigger sensor, we have a 35 millimeter on there and we have a 24 millimeter on this side. And with those focal lengths, they tend to match very closely. So that's our monstrous setup that I've been lugging around everywhere. It's been a pain. I'm never gonna do this again. Of course that is until my views start dropping again. And then I'm like, okay, I'll do another comparison video. <laughs> with this side by side, the first thing I'm noticing is that the red itself, it has a few different color profiles and gammas and they all generally look really good just right out of the camera. So a lot of times I feel like it's usable, but generally I just do slight, slight tweaks. The Black Magic on the other hand gives you three shooting modes to fill on. It gives you film, which is this flattest profile, extended video, and video. I'm not a fan of the video and extended video looks that you could bake on the camera. I would always, 100% of the time, shoot on the film profile, and then you could just drop in the LUT if you want. So I'm gonna set both of these cameras to kind of its flattest looks, and let's shoot this scene real quick where Carrie's working on a, what is that, a cabinet, a dresser? I got this one for free too, off the side of the road. Free furniture for the win. We can't afford nice furniture because you spend all our money on camera gear. <laughs> She's standing in a dark pocket and we have curtains behind her and then outside we have super bright windows. So pretty intense dynamic range needed for this scene. After playing with the footage, the red definitely has more usable dynamic range. It clocks in at 16.5 stops opposed to the black magic, which claims 13. But dynamic range is one of those things that can be measured in different ways and people's opinion on what's usable dynamic range can vary. But the black magic, holy crap, for a $1,300 camera, I can't think of any other camera in this price range that you can grade this heavily and have it still look this nice. So I'm impressed. Now by default, the Blackmagic does apply a magenta tint when you put it in the daylight white balance. So I thought that might be countering the green, but I took off the tint and still the green just looks so much more vibrant on the red. But I do know that the green spectrum is one of the more complicated colors for a camera sensor to see. I remember when Canon released the C300, the engineers were putting a lot of emphasis on getting the green colors correctly because our eyes see that green spectrum the most. Most. But as we get into low light territory at 6400 ISO, the black magic is surprisingly cleaner and has less noise than the red. And as we step into the super low light territory, 12,800, the black magic definitely outperforms the red. But keep in mind, the red does have the Gemini, which is supposed to be a low light king, which I do not have. All right, so you guys are familiar with my traditional ADD setup, and here's how it would look if I were to switch to the red and the black magic. I don't know, should I shoot all my videos on one? of these cameras i don't know that'd be a lot of data to manage but could be really cool putting the black magic up to the red i definitely feel like the red is easier to gray just right off the bat it could be because i'm so used to color grading red footage with the proper settings and lighting you can really just get the red to look really amazing just right out of camera black magic i felt like was a little bit more work to grade but luckily the black magic has a nice strong codec in there so you really can grade it pretty heavily so if you're shooting a project on the black magic i would definitely intend there to be a little bit more time in post-production for color grading so keep that in mind all right so let's circle back to that intro sequence with the teacher strike and this was shot on the black magic i did attach a speed booster to it to make it look a little bit more like super 35 opposed to micro four thirds and i used the canon 16 to 35 f 2.8 and also the canon 100 millimeter l series with image stabilization i didn't spend a ton of time color grading this probably about 15 to 20 minutes and within that time i wasn't able to get it to the spot where i'm like oh this is perfect but regardless i thought it was pretty decent and sometimes these rallies in downtown LA can turn more into like riots and people get crazy. So I really did not want to bring my red out on this pouring rainy day. With the black magic, I was able to keep it under my jacket for the most part and literally shoot on it while holding the umbrella at the same time, which is not something I could say for the red. So yeah, even though I'm pretty confident that the red footage would have came out looking a little bit better, it's still great to have this black magic pocket camera as another option. All right, so let's sum this up by talking about the pros and cons of these cameras. Now the black magic pocket cinema camera 4K, but f that name. The most obvious bro for the Black Magic is the price point at under $1,300. Oh my God. Any new cinema camera that comes out in this price range really is gonna have this to compete with. So that is really setting a new standard there. So the red on the other hand is like 15 to $20,000 just for the body. But once you start accessorizing it just to get it to work, you're easily in the 20s, 30s, $40,000 range. So really this is pretty amazing that we're comparing something that's a fraction 
of the red. And another obvious factor is the size of this thing. I mean, this is closer to the size of a DSLR than it is to a standard cinema camera. Putting a red on a gimbal, it's pretty difficult. You really need one of the higher end Ronin or Movi Pros with some adapters. Or you could put this on a majority of handheld gimbals like the Ronin S and many more out there. I'm also a pretty big fan of the ergonomics and the placement of the buttons. It's very, very simple. All the tools you need are very quickly accessible. And it's like, if you know how to use a DSLR, you can pick up one of these and start shooting right away. Before you go and shoot on a red, you definitely want to get yourself familiarized. Give yourself time to just understand the menu, what everything means. Besides the record and power on and off buttons, everything else is done touchscreen on the red. So you may or may not like that, but here it's very simple. It's a mixture of touchscreen as well as the easy access buttons here. So when it comes to the menu and adjusting settings, I actually prefer doing it on this body. Another benefit of this is the micro four thirds mount, meaning you could adapt a majority of lenses to it and also use speed boosters like I did. So if you already have micro four thirds lenses, then that can just pop on just like that. You can attach cinema lenses to it. You can attach Canon lenses to it, whatever. And on the red, you generally have the option between an EF or PL. And of course, this black magic had better low light performance than this dragon sensor. I can't say how it would perform against the Gemini sensor, but for this dragon sensor, way more noise than the black magic. Obviously designed for one person to hold. You get all your controls. It has phantom power, so you can send that over to a microphone. And last but not least, let's turn them both on and see how long it takes to start recording on each camera. So boom. Is it recording? There we go, that was fast. This camera can be turned on and start recording in seconds. Now we just gotta wait for this red to turn on. There, boom, now it's ready to record. Now, if you're in a professional set, that's not much of an issue because you usually turn it on at the beginning of the day and only really power down for long breaks like lunch or if you're gonna swap out that battery. But if you're like me in downtown and just walking around and you're just waiting for something interesting to happen, you can start recording within seconds, which is pretty significant because this thing, if you don't have the camera on and something's happening in front of you, by the time this thing turns on, it's done. All right, so let's talk about this red now. Now, I think the biggest draw to a red camera is the image it produces. It's very cinematic right out of the camera. And this is more my own opinion on it, but I felt like the red just looked very filmic opposed to the black magic, which felt like a very good sharp video camera. So they're both good, nice and sharp, but the feeling that you get out of the images from the red, it just Mm, love it. Another obvious factor is it's just designed more for professional use and professional workflows. It has an SDI port, which the Blackmagic does not. And then looking at this screen here, I have mine on an arm right here, just so I get like ultimate flexibility. But most people take this and mount it straight on the camera and it still articulates up and down. So even just having that up and down movement makes a huge difference. And it really is a big bummer that this screen on the back of here does not move even an inch in any direction. It also has a nicer, bigger sensor and more overall horsepower. What I mean by that is faster frame rates. You get 5K, you get raw recording. Everything a professional workflow wants, the RED can provide. So that's really nice. And right now I know I have this cable on here for this monitor, but it's generally designed so you can bolt everything straight onto the camera body and you can literally go completely cableless and operate it, which is awesome. Technically, this doesn't have any cables hanging off it right now, but if you want this to have decent battery life, you're gonna wanna patch in some power there and you're definitely gonna wanna run an HDMI cable if you're gonna do any unique angles so you can kind of look at it from above here or up here. So generally speaking, this is gonna get a little bit more cumbersome once you start adding some accessories to it, which brings me to my next point, which is that these are really designed to work with crews and teams. So generally you have your operator and then you have someone pulling focus and someone building the camera out and setting up the lenses. So you can really build these things out huge with matte boxes, huge lenses, cinema tape, follow focus units, everything. And yeah, sure, you could technically rig out any sort of camera once you put a cage on it, but anyone that's ever tried to take a DSLR and put a dozen accessories on it, knows that it's just not as solid. Like, I mean, this cage has a quarter inch thread on the top, quarter inch on the bottom, and two pins that kind of hold it in the side. But even with that, there's still always a little bit of play. And I've experienced this with pretty much any rig for like a DSLR. I used to take my T2i and try to rig it out like crazy. And at a point, it just starts becoming a pain because nothing's super sturdy. You know, smaller cameras, you pick it up at a weird angle and the follow focus doesn't engage the teeth. Monitors start flipping all over the place. It becomes 
becomes hard to reach certain things. Opposed to this camera where look how many mounting points there are all over the cameras. You can take this thing all rigged up and shake it all around and it's gonna be fine. This is fantastic for working with a crew in a production environment. So basically we own both these cameras and they're both great cameras. If we have a crew and we have the resources, I would always rather shoot on the red just because of that cinematic image that it just produces very simply and the better dynamic range and red code. It's not a massive crazy file to work with. It's nice and easy, assuming you have a pretty powerful computer. But I edit 5K raw off of my laptop all the time. So even though I have this black magic, I'm probably still gonna be shooting with this red more often. But of course there's gonna be certain project where this black magic is just nice and simple and small and exactly what we need. And of course this does take more time, at least in my experience, the color grade. So that is something to keep in mind because time with the colors can be very expensive too. So I do love both cameras, but I also have some complaints. Neither of these have built in ND filters. So, you know, we're gonna have to slap all those ND filters up front. And finally, they've both been known to have reliability issues, which sucks. I've had to send both of these cameras back to the manufacturers for defective products. That's my take on the cameras, but you guys saw the side by side. So you guys make up your own mind. Let's wrap this up by reading some comments from my last video, which was all about what cameras were used to film all the Oscar nominations for this year. And I also asked you guys what you guys think about having Alex on the show here. So, hey Alex. Andy the Lab said, Alex, if you don't come back, Potato Jet is gonna dress up like the kid from Up and throw ladders at you. So be careful. The kid from Up? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I can see results. No, don't say that. Alex, if you don't come back to the channel, we are gonna come over to your house and throw ladders at you. I'm Dude. sensing a pattern with the ladders here. <laughs> I happen to be a ladder collector. Fun fact for everybody. Some people with stamps, others Use ladders. Alex, if you don't come and teach us about sound, we'll fill your camera mic input jack with lint. Well, you weren't lying about the hurtful thing. This is... They're, they're intimidating. I'm telling you. You don't want to mess with these guys. Alex, if you don't come on the show, I will delete your Fortnite account. I already did that. You can't touch me. If you don't show up, we all will watch the first man. Muted. 